Welcome to our show, Beyond Perception, Uncovering Science Hidden Secrets with Remote Viewing. I'm Siu and this is my guest, Gabriel Boboc. Gabriel is known as a remote viewer with an incredible knowledge about physics in general. In this video we will explore what happens when a remote viewing data bit enters the synapse, the gap between nerve cells where information is transmitted. I was tasked a few weeks ago by Gabriel with a remote viewing piece of information enters the nervous synapse. You will place your viewing angel and scale in such a manner that you will be able to observe, describe and sketch what happens to the synapse. So welcome Gabriel. Hello, nice you meeting you. All, all well. <laughs> I hope everything is fine That's on your cool. side too. That's yeah. Cool. <laughs> yeah, yeah. We, yeah, we give our best here. So um, I want to say thank you for the task. Um, it was an incredible experience for myself. I worked uh, three controlled remote viewing sessions on it and I put in a kind of dream remote viewing that my subconsciousness can work in my dream state with that. It was a great experience and um, let us go over my data and every time when you have something, want to say something, jump, jump in. Yeah, and um, we will talk about it. Okay? Uh, yeah, first I wanted to say that uh, um, I was very surprised by your session, and uh, while I was conceiving the the tasking, I tried to uh, leave myself out of um, the process itself and all my expectations. Uh, I am uh, practicing some sort of meditation, like uh, when tasking someone. I am concentrating afterwards to uh, forget about my expectations and leave that person to do its own uh, uh, remote viewing process and uh, do not cling to any kind of result that might might uh, uh, that might appear. So this is what I did uh, uh, in in your case, Theo, and uh, uh, actually I wasn't expecting for it to to, to take these proportions. And uh, I wanted to pinpoint precisely what happens during a remote viewing uh, session. And I started with, uh, well, our brain is composed of synapses. It, 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 there are billions and billions of synapses. So everything that happens must happen there. Everything that can be recorded. So I said, okay, I want to, I want you to concentrate there. I'm not interested in anything else. So. And then I completely forgot what you were doing. And I was also, it was also a pleasure uh, for me to see your working process in those three stages that you uh, used. And uh, I am also curious to see how this is going to develop into the future because uh, I really enjoyed how you worked on it. You so. was able to have a clean tasking without pre-assumption. So you took the professional way. You're a professional women viewer as well, so I have no doubt about uh, that your tasking is uh, in general clean. Um, yeah, I hope we will discover in the future more from that, so uh, I really love to discover secrets uh, about women viewing, especially when it has so big value like this, what we did now. So yeah. um, I will open the session now with the screen sharing. and. Sure tell you a little bit about my experience and uh, how it felt for me. Okay, so for myself, I started on 1637, uh, it was solo, I was completely blind, no front loading, and I came up with my first ideogram. Uh, I had a confusion break. I was confused from the kind of ideogram. I took the tasking number again. I came up with an event and a structure. And in stage two, my first entry points, bluish, violet, striped, energetic, blue, white, narrow, high, yellowish, greenish. Here I had uh, already so little bit impression form, okay. It's something metaphysical that's not a normal target um, I worked through my stage twos I had here yeah, an early stage four impression from electrical dynamic also um, uh, an analytical overlay from like an event where electrical or energetic waves are included 
it was bright, shiny, golden, pointy. Um, like golden apertures opening. Uh, central wavy, grayish, white, shiny. Uh, I build up my dimensionals here. Curvy, long, narrow spaces. Uh, it will be like strings and my first reaction to the target came my static impact the gatekeeper impact interesting event here in this case i had in, in this graphic uh this representation it was really like crisscrossed energetic it was really strong tied together so i had an analytical overlay to that like energetic strong tight feeling like uh, like like macro force or something you know so um was interesting expression um i had after that vibrating feelings uh, it was wavy um, and i started to to sketch this here i will put in live video parts when I did the session also. Mm -hmm. I did an analytical overlay from a portal and here this was um, I had really an impression that's a kind of measurement. Yeah? Um, it had an analytical overlay reminds me on measurement of a uh, seismic or brain waves. I started with the first one, curvy upwards, wavy, and it was uh, entangled. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Stage yeah. 4 impression already. So I put one more and more and more. It was really, really strange and interesting at the same time. I came up in my Stage 3 with the next sketch here. It was splitting, like changing, and um, had an analytical overlay about um, double slit experiment. It was like a, p a particle or a particle or whatever or games uh, in here and have many possible outcomes. Um, everything had to do with the kind of mirroring. Yeah? Something was mirrored all of the time. And in this early time uh, of the first controlled removing session where I put only a toe inside mm -hmm. at least, uh, I had here a kind of mirroring, smooth, roundish, hollow, black, um, nearly like a mesh and like here small mirrors and an AOLBK from laser um, quite reddish whitish mm, I think this is this is a kind of preconceptional impressions where my subconscious consciousness want to say me here it's about mirroring a kind of mirroring a kind of, of mirroring, mirroring yeah <laughs> so I get to uh, it came to my stage four uh, dimensional impressions from linear focused uh, light reddish my AO signal like a laser dynamic it was everything pulsing and vibrating and it was about stabilizing um, layers focusing uh, I had a feeling of many layers um, uh, could could touch a f kind of aperture was bloggy cylindric uh, like a future application energetic pulse ble a pulse beam the target felt at all really really scientific for, for me mm, I was interested in that target had a wow uh, other said wow effect or a stunt of that it can be observed and there will be results my first stage form half like a threshold um, an experiment where they try to break a particle into subparticle with a kind of light and vibration. So here, the sketch it reminds me on it's it's a wave and it's uh, these are particles to the same time, mm -hmm. um, and they are will pushed or forced to uh, to a kind of place, like submerging, um, pulling, extracting, shadowing. I also signal like research isn't for public. So it has everything to do with energy pulling, extracting, block building, chain building. Was another interesting impression for me because I started here and it started like automatically like a block chain, like block building from one block to building the next one. It's like a chain building 
and it get more more and more and more and more so all tied to each other like small events who are, who are uh, tie, uh, tied to mm -hmm. each other <coughs> yeah i expressed that here with my analytical overlay signal I like to try to force energy very artificial even and this is interesting for myself too that it felt all really artificial so it felt not uh, like natural i don't know why it is but we come later to to this breach incidents what experience you've got maybe uh, a clue why it felt for remote viewer so artificial i might have a clue um given the fact that you had to explore you were sent to a very small uh, scale in uh, in space and time uh, which is maybe about a few uh, hundreds of nanometers or stuff something like this which is a synaptic cleft uh, and uh, you were asked to extract some information about an event that happens there then uh, automatically this leads to the to science and the only th way that we can understand those things is for now through through science through calculus through something which is very methodic and um, calculus based so this is why maybe this was part of your cognitrons that were trying to uh, give you a signal that this has to do with science with if you want to understand this you must perform some precise measurements and some precise uh, theories and stuff like this so maybe this is why you and it also leads to other areas of science maybe like quantum computing and and things like this and maybe this was just um, a sign that you, by digging into this kind of things you can uh, you can go into the other areas of science maybe this was the uh, this is my clue I, this is my uh, the way i see this thing not necessarily that remote viewing is a an artificial uh, phenomenon because maybe some theories would like to go there but then why would it be artificial unless we live in a simulation I think also that it, it is for for me as remote viewer it was really unfamiliar unfamiliar if you if you're observing an event on a macro scale it's nothing what is usual normally even in remote viewing it's not usual and so it have a kind of artificial uh, feeling like an art artificial event that makes sense yeah it I, it was for me and I wrote it down here I, it was a sinister feeling for myself my uh, aesthetic impact to that. Um, if you take batteries, yes. source okay. power, out of electromagnetic life, it becomes a pull effect. It, it could have a physical sense uh, if we are um, assuming that whatever happens uh, uh, in relationship to the mind powers actually is related to some sort of force because uh, when when you are using the mind to find out something or to influence something and those things get to get changed get to have a change then this means automatically an energetic um, change uh, some delta e somewhere and this automatically means a force of some type i'm not sure if it is precisely an electromagnetic force uh, this is yet to be discovered or yet to be investigated but m at the end like take this like to like a tube uh, what happens what happens here in in the tube in between the the two ends might not be electromagnetical precisely or it might be in another s kind of space but what happens at the ends of the tube is locally electromagnetic it must be uh, otherwise there is no remote viewing your nervous system will not be able to encode or decode anything unless it is excited by something which is energetic either chemical or of course there are electrical synapses 
So there must be something uh, material at the ends of this tube, yes. quote unquote. So th a force, yes, could be. Yeah, it it uh, felt for me like that. So I continue here that I had um, spinning effects like this jump of that particle isn't visible in that plane. And now we come to uh, my jump sheet. And it was funny for myself because I, s I started here with number one, a kind of building. Um, I came up with my second, uh, like an opening. We've got to jump here a little bit because number one was blocky. Uh, I could touch an uh, aperture. Um, uh, chemical physics lab 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 laboratory feeling. It was like an existing machine. So maybe my subconscious mm -hmm. took something what tried to present the Wimmer viewing data information or bit. The second one uh, felt for me like a portal what is opening. And something goes in. Uh, maybe number one here. And this transmitted what like tunneled to the uh, to the other place. I wrote down in my uh, matrix to that um, number one uh, measuring pulsating three parts layered, two vibrating opening ALS like opening time space leaving that plane here this one and go to mm -hmm. 2A, um, hidden, layering, under light, force, spacious, dark, spinning, quiet. And I felt a kind of vouching sound that was interesting. So transformation and block building. What sound? <coughs> hmm? Again, please. What kind of sound you said about uh, some it sound? Wa it was like a uh, washing sound, really like a, like a noise sound, like <laughs> really forceful sound. It was interesting. Mm -hmm. It came up and it was about transformation and block building came up again, and these all in in this area here. The second one felt like a kind of portal again, and it was like like this one mm -hmm. is going here and uh, disappears here and appears here. Um, <coughs> to A, uh, to B, an, uh, the opening, to B, opening, crystal clear. AOL, AOLS like particle is we entry the normal plane. So how I, how I expressed here. Now we come to a point where it, where it was really 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 strange for myself because the entry point here felt for me like a breach number three. It was really really oh, one of the less moments in my session what was a little bit frightened for myself uh, it was like broken you know dimensionals was broken uh, broken dimensionals splitting and high pitch sounds we really like so loud and louder and louder i had rainbow colors and like splitting extreme artificial event here feels not natural i don't like that can imagine it was a feeling like something you've got a kind of layer like let's imagine like crystalline or glass and you've got pushing a push force from the other side and the glass or the crystalline starting to break off push through i i thought a lot about that and in the beginning i thought about maybe that is a kind of proven for the threshold itself but yesterday night um i was busy with this uh with this approach or with the thinking and it makes not really a sense because the extrasensoric information came in our subconsciousness and <coughs> the threshold is only the alignment between the consciousness and subconsciousness so the point have mm -hmm. to be earlier 
now it's a big question if this what, what I'm describing here is expressing the point when the remote viewing data bit enters the subconsciousness or the consciousness so I'm not really really sure about it what what do you think? What what was in your tasking process your your goal? Um, the consciousness point or the subconscious? Um, point? I uh, it, the tasking process <coughs> was just this. Uh, I just took the um, I I mean I trusted you uh, as a remote viewer that you can actually go to that scale, uh, that microscopical scale. I trusted that you can do it and that I, I trusted so. that you can really isolate <laughs> only that event and yes and you isolated only that uh, which is amazing again you realize that it was about an event which is again uh, wow because uh, many times uh, you're starting with something and you end up with something else I mean you can see say it's a structure and only afterwards you say ah oh, oh, wait it's an event it has people it has something mm -hmm. but in your case you knew immediately it was an event and um, uh, you were right down at that scale now um, to me it's it's interesting uh, because you see the, the, there is this concept of a veil uh, which covers our, which covers the true reality from us, from our mind, and this notion of a veil is also in esoteric traditions and in uh, uh, secret brotherhoods uh, and uh, uh, organizations like maybe the Golden Dawn or whatever, like uh, this, and all the spin-offs, uh, and who knows what uh, any other brotherhoods and uh, they are all talking about this kind of veil that has to be uh, punctured or ruptured or broken apart in order for us to see the the truth uh, also yeah also in um, I think in the Jewish tradition um, there are uh, certain vessels they call it vessel uh, vessels like maybe eight vessels, seven vessels. It doesn't. Uh, I I don't know. It's related to the tree of life, and uh, in order for us to survive in our kind of like primitive uh, level at which we remain for now, our soul is is uh, protected from the truth by some sort of vessels. They call them vessels. These are some. Um, walls and uh, when the soul is ready to find out the truth it's going to poke through that vessel and find out some more and uh, in remote viewing this uh, and any any esoteric person wants to break those vessels to see what is outside the real truth why there is a force you know where does that force does information come into our nervous system like a bullet, like a, uh, something which is forcefully, or, or are we calling for it uh, equally forcefully? Forcefully, you know. So it, th why does does it have to break? So, uh, it, it felt this for is me. what I don't understand right now. Yeah, it is the point where where the information, but it's re-entry in our brain, in our system. Yeah. Number three. Number four was um, yeah, oh. <laughs> quite funny. I started to yeah. painting this one, so the head, and mm -hmm. continued with something here. What reminds me, um, we will go to direct the data. I don't want to interpret here. Uh, black, edgy, like cracking window glasses plasticity screen observing ALS like in screen or corner holder um, to this time I, I did not know what what I did here afterwards now when I know what the target is it looks a little bit like this is the head something coming in the head and it matches to the whole process we've got an object um, breaching mm -hmm. in to our brain system like the like a kind of download 
and it is a mirroring process because mm -hmm. the screen, the screen is mirroring everything. And the outcome is number five, again our number one. So, uh, fields like a location, building, outside. As for and half, like a campus where something or this technology is in research and busy with it. Interesting uh, <laughs> statement. <laughs> that um, could be. <laughs> this would mean that somebody else is also busy with uh, to reveal the secrets about remote viewing. It makes sense, and maybe a I campus, am, a university. I am certain. Whatever. This was my first session. This summary. Um, I will skip the summary here, but it is uh, a compilation of all what I wrote here down. I had then yeah. my second session. So this session I sent you first and you went over it. And I felt you was uh, yeah. uh, mm -hmm. okay I with was the data. Work. <laughs> How you felt when you, when you, when you get yeah, this later? I was at work and I opened it and I said, what? <laughs> What? What? I was at work, man. I was at work and I got a message from you. I downloaded that and when I saw the first page, I said, what? He did it. How did he do it? And uh, I said, hey, well, we're, we're really on to something and uh, I had goosebumps and uh, yeah. Uh, and anyway, I work in retail, you know, so I had to face the clients and I half, half of my brain was thinking about uh, what you sent me there and the half of my brain was trying to sell refrigerators <laughs> yeah it was a nice experience anyway and and i tried to i said okay so theo is on to something here so i don't want to disturb him and uh, give him um, like uh, give, give him um, reasons to perform some aols so that, that is why that is why i was quite cryptic uh, if you observe so i didn't give yeah. you quite what you needed to know about the yeah. <laughs> you, you gave yeah, me I, knew I, I knew you were on the right track. You gave me more or less <laughs> nothing, only that I'm on the right track and you would like that I continue. So I prepared then for yeah. uh, the evening a kind of contributed system. I went in my first control session. Uh, you can see here in the morning, uh, 1 to 8 a.m. Um, so when I felt a little bit tired already, yeah. uh, I made not an end to this session and directly jumped here from my table into my bed and trying to let work my subconsciousness uh, in my dream state to work the target out. Yeah, same like a task for myself. I'm laying down, say to myself, okay, give me more information about the target. What is this all about? So it's a try to use my dream state as a kind of photo deck. And this is what it is, is simulating data when uh, everything else is sleeping. And it works really well. And in the morning I woke up and made the other session, the next CAV session, and then I ended the session. But let us go through. Um, I came up yep. with uh, energy here, my ideogram, energy B and uh, energy and an event. Go went again to my stage two, golden, dry, stuffed, smooth, uh, stringy, um, roundish, bright, uh, strong, magnetical again, early stage four um, impressions, silvery, shiny feels like something is under pressure, lightning, yellowish, sapping, vibrational. Uh, analytical overlay from an escape. It was spacious, narrow, lined up, mirroring, and uh, my AI became interesting, like space is growing. And it was really like, again, this portal mm -hmm. feeling, something is opening here. And I tried to express that, and here I'm it was, I'm not quite sure how well, uh, relevant it is to the target. I can at least not bring it into a, in to a perspective where it uh, matches 100%. What? Percent uh, because it was like a mesh. And it was what like do you think uh, that was? 
Yeah, I'm trying to figure that out from, for myself. Uh, tighty, narrow, small, thin, airy, energetical, <laughs> and pulsating. So it felt for me like a machine, yeah? like mm -hmm. one pumps energy into a system. This could be the synapse uh, system. Okay. It could be, I don't know. But to the time to the could session, be. it felt really uh, 3D earthy on a normal scale, not on, on a macro scale. But it could be a misinterpretation and for why myself. Uh, why did you draw the blocky? Why did you draw the blocky stuff there? What is that object? That is a good question. According to I you, like, what do you, you feel about it? What, what? It was like uh, <laughs> you, you, you have got. You know, if if you ask me afterwards, I, I have got to try to interpret that, and I can say that I'm seeing here lines of energy yeah, systems and, and over a blocks, over a kind of block. Um, and here again, another block. Maybe it has to do with this blockchain building. Uh, we, can mm -hmm. we came in the later sessions to it more specifically. Um, here, blocky self-constructing. What yeah, if it is. it... Yeah. Uh -huh. What I if... Wanted to, if yeah, what? I wanted to say, what if... What if that... Uh, Let's say it, it kind of has a link. Like, uh, what if that block? Let's say it's it represents a uh, target. Let's say the target is a structure, and uh, whatever flows there, it could be the um, energy that flows around it and comes back to us in order to uh, to give us information about that target. I was thinking about this too. Maybe if we, this could be one interpretation but these are only interpretations now we are talking about your session it, it, it is it is a possibility i can say later in my after uh, session later that i've got information here that a liquid system is a responsibility for the information transfer like repeating pattern mm -hmm. and here was a jump to curvy clearly whitish thin then we have these brain wave activities when I when I'm uh, watching at this all, it is like the information is coming, like this block building. The block is built up. It's these are repeating patterns, and it have yeah. to do with our brain waves. And what what I felt here in this sketch, yeah, that was <laughs> it was funny. It was like maybe a kind of block or information or whatever is going into the system, trying to to look here. Can I dock here? No. Can I dock here? No. Can I dock here? And so on. Like searching mm -hmm. the white, like it is sensing one after the other for docking. And I thought about that process. It could be, <laughs> in the after review here, uh, it could be the way when we encoding the data, and we are trying to decode it and bring it into a language that everybody can understand it. And this decoding process would show this would be the graphic representation of analytical overlay. And if we are looking into that precisely, even the decoding from an impression from blue, we have got to find this blue. So we are all of the time when we are reviewing, we have got analytical overlays to try to get the impressions into a language what everybody can understand. What are you thinking yes, about that? Yes, but this you, you see now, um, I am thinking about it that uh, now maybe you're not talking about analytical overlay per se uh, or not such a negative version of the analytical overlay. Um, from my point of view, and uh, maybe I get burned into the square, into some square because of this, uh, the whole session, the whole remote viewing session is a very fine balance in between analytical overlays and real data. It's a very yeah, fine balance. When you are going too much into sense, yes, you, when you're going too much into sensing, let's say th you have two halves, okay, like this, you go too much into sensing, you are delivering too little information and the monitor will have to ask you, hello, are you still there? Uh, I mean, Earth, if you, feel, if you, have a monitor, you yeah. only sensing. When you are going too much, 
yeah if you're going too much into the interpretation and analytical you're sensing too little and you're giving uh, you're giving false information so uh, the remote viewing process is a very well established balance in between these two and that data coming there uh, actually I can kind of see what what's going on there um, they have this uh, they made this study about the human brain and they found out that the uh, the regions in the brain where images are record recorded or uh, yeah recorded are uh, surrounded by other regions that have uh, words and significations syntax uh, around them they are uh, the zones are con uh, zones are concentric so you have let's say the image of a chair here and around it there are all the words and significations and uh, stuff that is analytical regarding to that image so this is kind of the, the pattern that our brain works through the, the, you have uh, a, a core of sensing like uh, images uh, uh, smells whatever comes through your senses and around it there is a fine um, uh, coating of words and significations this is how our minds like uh, as humans are working because if not if it's not encoded and uh, coated with that signification is you won't be able to operate with it but only at an animalic animalic uh, level uh, but you won't be able to convey it to other humans you, you need to, fo to to not have interruptions in in that coating of words and, and significations and symbols so this the, is the, and when data comes into our mind it looks for those places to to dock into and form a, you know it's like mail delivery it, it, it's like uh, it's like FedEx let's say <laughs> like when all the packages are coming and they try to see what goes through to whom <laughs> exactly the word finding process itself is a kind of I say is a kind of analytical overlay yeah, in a small scale to have this information yeah. how I call it in my language yeah oh it's blue ah I got it so searching tac, 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 tac. Ah, it's blue yeah. so yeah it was interesting sketch here yeah. yeah yeah then it started to get a little Very bit crazy um, uh, it was shadowy multi-layered spinning What's that? <laughs> and a kind of networking started. Yeah, it was really like doof, 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 doof. networking, structuring, in placing harmonic. Like uh, I had an S4 and a half bringing a chaotic system into a pattern and harmonic frequency, pinging information transfer. I had it is uh, this real this feeling of harmonic like the Fab Fabonacci formula. No, I painted it there it really felt like to bring all this into a kind of some harmonic system um, I expressed it here graphical again it was blue space isn't open it is like an expanding even on multi-dimensional planes in some it is visible in other it is not hidden networking it is all about jumping I could touch kind of particle and waves. It is about electromagnetic. It is pulsating. I had a fractal feeling here, obstruction. Um, and here it came to, uh, because of all this fractal feelings, that particle waving, it was a spacey feeling, really like a wow effect for myself. Yeah, I was sitting there and I said, whoa, wow, what's going on here? It was a little bit moving for myself, for my visuals fractals that was impressive <coughs> other emotional that side would be shocked interested uh, I had an AOL from the uh, Hitomi session uh, Hitomi Akamutsu when she was I uh, made a session about the uh, Higgs boson particle um, I came up mm -hmm. here with this sketch um, Again, like a particle is going through something, there are more of that, 
like an energetic ball is networking, appearing and disappearing, you know, it was like appearing and disappearing, maybe several of them. I questioned here myself, show me what is the most noteworthy here in relation to chain building. When the system in is whole, holded by appearing and disappearing particle or waves. I came up with this and I started, came up more and more to these cube things. Yeah, I had here number one, uh, number two, number three, number four, number five, number six, number seven. Like point what one. What are those? I had a feeling like point one is stabilized. It disappears to help to stabilize on point four to here. Like it jumps from here to here. Mm -hmm. um, maybe in an invisible uh, plane again. It jumps without, yeah, I, wo I wrote it here. It jumps without mm -hmm. time in the invisible plane, keeps energetic structure. It was about pushing, leaving, coming, uh -huh. upbuilding. And really like it's jumping like an energetic system from here to here to here. And every time when it, the energy is going down or it's starting to destabilize, it's stabilizing again in, in a form, in a kind mm -hmm. of jumping, you know, like a helping system. Every time you've got a strong signal, okay. it's stabilized on one place, it goes away a little bit and it's jumping, poof, stabilizing mm -hmm. there again, jumping every time to another place. And this is the graphic representation here. I had crystalline structures and uh, again these wave styles measures, you know. I try to express that, that it jumps from here to there to there to there to there. Um, as for half a self-structuring process that builds bridges in space-time to jump to hold the structure where needed. It grows. Uh, chain and block building. It was 2 a.m. Two a in the morning. 2 a.m. 4 and I went directly sleep. That was the first part of the session. You've got some souls so, to that process. So this is... Uh, yeah, <laughs> this last part... Uh, this last part must be... Uh, um, the last part, the, the last... the self-structuring process is the most important yeah. uh, thing that you got maybe out of this uh, session it, uh, from my point of view I saw and I think you are uh, I think you agree with me that uh, the remote viewing process kind of defined itself for the first time during a uh, remote viewing session uh, in a new way uh, that probably includes quantum physics uh, and uh, this sure should be uh, this should be remembered, like a a self-structuring process that builds bridges in space-time to jump to hold the structure uh, where needed. It grows and uh, chain and block building. So with, maybe we can restructure a bit this uh, this formulation to. Uh, to sound uh, more gram grammatically correct, but it's I think you, we got a uh, a new definition. Uh, if uh, what I think about what you saw there, um, yeah, the, there that thing that you saw there cannot happen unless we are talking about quantum physics happening in the brain and with the brain and the, with the space around the brain and. Uh, that structure that keeps itself by uh, making jumps, that could be, for example, um, a hyperstructure in in a more in a multidimensional space that actually rotates, and it preserves some sort of symmetry because this is this is what happens in nature. Everything is um, subjected to transformations and rotations, and if that object doesn't look the same after a transformation, then that object is not a real object and it will uh, actually divide in more objects that can support those, tra those transformations. This is, a, this is how the universe works. If we're talking about consciousness or about 
uh, data trying to preserve itself during the remote viewing process, that then that kind of transformation or rotation in a multidimensional space must happen. Uh, and it also shows something about how consciousness manages uh, to, uh, to keep itself uh, alive and constant. Like, it, okay, it, it is a continuous work and war against entropy that tries to change us, okay? If entropy tries to change me here, okay, I will do a jump and uh, accommodate, but I will remain the same, the data is kept the same, it's, uh, it's uh, a conservation. Uh, for those who, knows, who know physics, this is a conservation uh, law and a symmetry law that we have discovered here uh, that takes place with the data in remote viewing too. I can see that data has resilience and at least maybe uh, su supported by the remote viewing process and structure, the data gets to be resilient and it survives uh, the road from the target to our brains and it gets decoded. It gets decoded. So this, this is what I think about what you showed there and you showed some networks there and we have a neural network inside our brain. What happens and the blocky structures uh, and the chain building uh, is that we are analyzing the target piece by piece actually, at least at the beginning, uh, until the aperture is big enough to see macro stuff. Uh, we are taking the target, let's say it's this phone, we're taking the target step by step, like this is, this here is uh, shiny and, uh, uh, and uh, polished and stuff, and then I move here, and this is the same, but this is round, and, and so on and so forth. So data is gathering and comes to us in little blocks that we must put together and reconstruct right. this, uh, this target, this form. It will be reconstructed piece by piece. In, uh, in sciences, in physics, in mathematics, this is called sometimes finite element calculus. When uh, you're trying to to see the properties of an object by imparting it in many, many, many uh, small uh, geometrical units like triangles uh, or cubes or whatever, and you try to see what happens to it by altering a little here and see what how it propagates here. So, um, so this is what remote viewing does, uh, sampling the target bit by bit and then trying to reconstruct it until it has an aha moment when it kind of says okay wait I have enough puzzle pieces to, to kind of see the big image and that maybe is the aesthetic impact when you can uh, move farther away and see ah okay I'm dealing here with uh, with something that is very interesting and the aperture grows maybe then it's oh it's a building now I can see it's a building so I think th uh, that is what happens there. The, yeah, the aesthetic impact is the first own understanding of the feeling way what's going on there, like a reaction is coming. And it's aesthetic, it's a reaction. Ooh, this is great. Yeah. Or what is what I, you know, this understanding of what's going on here, like if you've got a criminal case, like, oh, well, that's ugly. Yeah, um, the emotional reaction to the target side mm -hmm. itself. Uh, you uh, you mentioned um, again the block building and the properties, because in my dream state, um, yeah. I had um, it was all about properties with special properties. So it's I, I don't know if this is the perfect uh, English terms for that. Like properties, like you've got a property Ooh. for a building. That's a property. Yeah, and you have uh, special correct, uh, characteristics about that. There are such properties with special yeah. characteristics 
properties keeps the same. There are several of them, but inside are changing environments. So in my dream, it was like I'm in a kind of hotel mm -hmm. um, and people are coming in and coming out. I was outside of the hotel and I, I was in a kind of country, Southeast Asia, I guess it was, that it was all about the changing people in a property, uh, in a building. In this, uh, this, in this situation, it was hotels for me. So this was my dream about. So uh, and then on the later stage, like three astronauts came back in a capsule into atmosphere. The three were really exhausted, and three other people yeah. on the ground pulled and helped them when they touched the ground. I had here a small sketch about that. It was all about these changing characteristics on the same property. You've got thoughts to that? You yeah, I, I have a question. Um, can you tell me, I can't read it very well from here, but can you tell me uh, in the first phrase, there are special properties with special, and you said there, you wrote there a German, uh, Eigenschaften. A German word. Can you state it, please? So, Eigenschaften in Eigenschaften. English would be futures, properties, characteristics, attributes. Um, this would be okay. Eigenschaften. Because in quantum in quantum physics, you have the word, the word eigenstates. Okay, uh, I cannot are, relate it to something uh, because I don't know that. The state, yeah, yeah, the eigenstates are the 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 states of a of, for example, of a quantum system, but not not necessarily a quantum system. You have eigenvectors. Uh, called eigenvectors, proper vectors, like uh, s some measure, some um, measures that belong to that system, no matter how you see, from what angle you see it, it has its own values, like eigenvalues, eigenvectors, like yeah. I am Gabriel, no matter how, uh, maybe one sees me as Marius, maybe one says I'm uh, uh, I'm Johnny, but uh, my eigenstate, I am uh, yeah. I'm Gabriel. Okay, so, um, yeah. so yeah, the fact that you mentioned Eigenschaften or something which sounds resembles to that, again, is uh, is interesting. Yeah, and um, again, what you said there that you said there that the people inside the uh, inside the hotel are uh, changing places. Yeah, it, it was the, the the property, the hotel itself was yeah. the standing fact what what will not change yeah. but it, like the information like maybe the people yeah. where the information goes in goes out so this is changing but the property mm -hmm. itself don't don't change uh -huh. the characteristic is the in incoming ingoing uh, and outgoing people like information you know it doesn't matter where where i watched and I turned yeah. around in my this dream and process. where i went it was the process of that. It was how my yeah. subconsciousness tried to work like a holodeck on it and trying to understand what, what this target is about. <laughs> this, uh, yeah, this, this is a process in the brain. I think you, yeah, I, I think you have nailed it here, like, um, uh, like an information uh, theory process and like a number theory press process because I, uh, there was, there was something related, yeah, there, there was this scientist that had uh, a sort of demonstration uh, involving um, about numbers involving, I, I must uh, research it and I'll uh, give you the link, involving yeah, also cool. a, a hotel. But th the thing that you showed there is again, yeah, uh, the thing that you showed there is again uh, another proof let's say like this that we are dealing with like permutations uh, you know permutations when stuff is changing around or, or another stuff yeah. comes in uh, but the main structure remains the same but uh, and this is again related to rotations in more dimensions 
and to things remaining the same. So we are again, for everyone listening, we are again talking about uh, conservation and about symmetry to, to transformations. So it, again, it is about resilience and uh, this goes also towards the quantum uh, error correcting codes uh yeah that i think the brain is using yeah so after my i woke up in the morning and directly went to my table and made uh, made the last session on it so here i had enough time over the night to have a kind of concept about my holodeck <laughs> And um, mm -hmm. here I get really deep into all what we described before. I had here uh, an event and a structure again. It was white, yellowish, edgy, metallic, silvery, uh, vibrating, fluffy, soft. It have a kind of um, a blur, blurring, f unsharpness. Uh, I felt movement here as a stage 4 descriptor. It was for me like a gate. Um, build up here my dimensionals, open, tight, closed. We that's vibra uh, vibrating and opening. It was really like... <laughs> something was opening, it wasn't quiet. A mm -hmm. kind of press, pressing, a kind of activity. Here again, I'm pretty sure about it, uh, brain frequency here. Here the property jumps in as analytical overlay, several hollow uh, analytical overlay break like an entry, uh, maybe it's the synapse itself or it's the node uh, of, of it, uh, th if I have a special name, nodes of uh, Renvier, there I have it, maybe it's kind of that, I'm not sure, it was fast, it was jumping. Mm -hmm. Reminds me on the on the Mozart particle test. There was a test outside uh, a long, long time ago, I don't mm -hmm. know, 20 years or something, maybe 15, I'm not quite sure about, where they sent a particle, A, um, uh, and tunneling the little information bit about the music of Mozart and was tunneling that and it was claimed it came before on the point C before it was sent. You remember this kind of... Uh, I hope I'm right with it. And it was... Uh, yeah, yes. I, uh, yes, I remember it. Time, time yeah. seems in this space to go backwards, to be, yeah? like here the time went backwards and uh, the particle was before in point C, uh, back, uh, before it was sent, it was seen already. It had a feeling of mirroring, reminds me on a kind of mirroring. Several particles are mirrored on several planes. Here we have got these blocks again like these are mirrored uh, here are mirrored here and mirroring uh, is mirrored here here we have got like barriers or something but they are all interconnected uh, like small connected holding spanning LBK like changing positions in the invisible invisible plane no. it was an invisible plane again I gave myself a movement uh, exercise, move, moving to optimal position to invisible plane, something should be perceivable. And now we come to a really, really interesting part for myself also. It was like, I'm in the, in the English, give me a second. I was in the original, <laughs> in the original soup of creation, uh, my mod what? module soup. I'm trying to, ex uh, to exchange that here, uh, in my, for my language. In English. Uh, it was like it was fluffy, white, certain, roundish, open, harmonic, and caught at the same time. Several small linear, circling, round. Analytical overlay like an entry point moving certain matching to another cross path and jumping. It was like like the like the primal soup all of that. And I tried to explain that. Afterwards it reminds me a little bit of the Higgs boson test 
and what has shown there with the, when the explosion is going out of that and what keeps all together you know, on this harmonic system. And we came to the switchboard because in this process is a kind of bridge building and this bridge building includes mm -hmm. these cubes again this impression I went to this one this thing is moving <laughs> the soup you've got this here and here in this area or plane or whatever uh, starting these cubes these cubes are all interconnected to each other they have got a stabilizing they have a stabilizing process like three properties are interacting with each other the process from the planes of the nothing to the plane of 3d world from here to this block building thing you've got a block building it is pushed from one threshold to the next and here you've got a 3d world <laughs> uh, was an unbelievable, unbelievable feeling when I when I made all this, when I sketched all what? the details, when I was oh, in the process. Yeah. Wait, wait a minute. What I, <laughs> what you got there, could be described uh, like you discovered. How does the uh, the 3D phenomenal world that we know. <laughs> How does it come about? Uh, from yes, from uh, from the from the nothingness, from the uh, from yeah. whatever that space, that that weird uh, hyperspace or whatever that is, and in the middle there is something which is built blo like blocks, like yeah. our known data, our trees, our cars, our relatives, whatever, and uh, it you showed how they actually how they form and there is this space in between two nothingnesses that <laughs> yeah it's it kind of, it is kind of mind-boggling <laughs> yeah it's this, scary it's a little scary <laughs> yeah it, it was an an unbelievable feeling to to remote viewing this to experience that process I will never forget that. And it, it, because it in order to do remote viewing, yeah, yeah, these thinking. In order um, to do remote viewing, that is where we are going. That um, carries me till today. Um, this experience, especially this part of it, I know, with this, with this uh, magic cubes, with uh, how it was built up, and like the printing of the 3D world. Um, we follow here in stage four, I try to gather more information about it. It was hollow, open and closed. I had a free feeling. I really felt really free in all that. Like endless possibilities. Rectangular. Then I had Zauberwürfel, mm. a magic cube. And it was like this one, like there. In these magic cubes are the properties. Or these are, also these are the properties. Everything is shifting, creating, moving. For me, it was only like, wow, wow. All kinds of emotions I felt inside. I could touch kind of fields. It was about 3D printing, shadowing, stabilizing. It's one half. It is a process to bring out of a chaotic system an harmonic environment. Properties are fixed. Content is permanently changing. Again, like these cubes are all in between in action and there's moving and changing a complete whole system of creating 3D world. I wanted so to know more about this magic cube what I had so here that uh, I made is yeah, stage five. You you have some thoughts? Mm -hmm. Oh Where yes, this uh S four and a half uh could could be added successfully to the other uh, to the other to the new definition of the remote viewing that was uh, uh, cr not created but received uh, in in these sessions uh, because it has something to do with it and I think it is another missing part so these two should be kind of kept together and uh, uh, understood better. Yeah. 
I guess you're right. Um, let us take a look what I get out of the magic cube. Objects was cubes, particles, subparticles, yes. waves, and frequencies. Uh, for everybody else who's maybe not so familiar with the process of controlled remote viewing, um, what we are doing with the stage five is to interrogating the data line. So we are trying, we have, uh, as an example, an AOL on tangible or intangible, and we want to know more about it. So we are zipping out more information, what lays behind the information itself. So uh, we have got the attributes of the magic cube is, was about interchanging, stabilizing, vibrating, inhaling, exhaling, fast, timeless, volley. Um, the subjects was like printing zum Vorschein bringen, in German, uh, to bring to the fore, reveal, <laughs> easy in English, printing, reveal. To bring forth? Uh, no, no we, we, uh, it's a reveal, reveal, to reveal something. Mm. Uh, to, ah, okay. Uh, you bring something to uh, to uh, to um, to shine, you know. Uh, you bring something to shine, something you show something. That's mm -hmm. uh, maybe the best translation for that. Printing, reveal, stabilizing, system okay. building, and erstarren. I don't know in English. A freeze. To congeal, freeze. Like all these, what's happening in this cube, you know, it's starting, it's everything interchanging and dynamic, but in the process, when, when it ca comes to the, to the th 3D itself, it is like a freezing that you can see that maybe like a table, like our surfaces here, what we have, doesn't matter what we have in the 3D mm -hmm. world. It's a okay. kind of freezing. Um, it is forcing harmonic, uh, the topic <laughs> is forcing <laughs> harmonic, <you> forcing <laughs> What? <laughs> we have got delay. Again. Are you trying to say that our world is, uh, yeah? That, are you trying to say that our world is somehow based on the Minecraft a game engine? <laughs> it looks like that. <laughs> From all you're describing here, it's, uh, it's <laughs> it sounds like Minecraft to me. I never played Minecraft, <laughs> uh, but maybe it is a little bit like that. <laughs> I don't know. I know only the pictures of Minecraft with the blocky. I six. am planning to download <laughs> it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> so what yeah. we have here? Mm, it was open, close. I felt really free and happy. Interfacing, interchanging, like in high amplitude to hold frequency, roundish, several. Uh, several layers opening, changing system, I could touch blurbs, wings, narrowing, E1, oh no, 1. Ah, okay, okay, I go into stage 6 here and I a model, clade model. Uh, and here I've got the, the modeling mm -hmm. of the clay, clay modeling. And this was number 1 what oh, I did here, these, these blurbs, uh, what I have here. And uh, to number one here, yeah, changing system blurbs and wings, energetical, vibrating, and colorful, like electromagnetical force plays a role here. Number two, this one. Uh, we uh, try to express these cubes. Um, cube several 3D separated slits, hot cold, changing temperature, vibrating, ice cold, metallic, grit surface and liquid. And here we come to this liquid thing again when we are uh, thinking back to the information mm -hmm. what I have there with this liquid where you talked about. Like liquid is the transport system between these cubes and bringing information exchange. Uh, here, it felt for me like gold as AOL or as tangible. I've got to take a look. A uh, thin micromillimeter like gold, like a thin gold plate, like a false electromagnetic, like mm. the thin gold plate is an electromagnetic field. Number four was, yeah, 
is maybe again these I think the notes of Renvier uh, again you know what you can see between mm -hmm. the synapse and the synapse system could be a possibility and it is roundish sliced like in the slices enough space to put a thin gold plate <coughs> inside I don't know what I get there and number five was like tunneling, setting frames, stabilizing slices. It is crisscrossed error signal like you have a straight line property and you force away for wave particle, you slice and versperren, blocking, uh, and blocking if needed the ways to stabilize the energetic frequency. This solves the problem of instability session and Target was an event in relation yep. to a structure, tangible where properties, fields, blurbs, wings, surface, gold frames, and electromagnetic force fields, intangible where shifting, creating, 3D printing, shuttering, stabilizing, interfacing, and interchanging. Charging and interchanging seems to play a role here. I sense then an electromagnetic force, a tunneling effect, setting and stabilizing frame patterns. It is a process to wing out of a chaotic system an harmonic environment, properties are fixed, content is permanently changing, like in high amplitude to hold frequencies. Electromagnetic force plays a role here, like liquid is, trans is a transport system between these cubes and bringing information exchange. Thin gold plates are in an electromagnetic field. In the slices is enough space to put the thin gold plates inside. You have straight properties, uh, straight line properties, and you force away for wave particle. You slice and lock if necessary the ways to stabilize the energetic frequencies. This solves the problem of instability. Session end. And that was my journey. To it was an amazing journey, even for me as a tasker. Yeah. Um, what we can get out of all this information? Anyway, if you know my article, uh, I can get out. Uh, first of all, <clears throat> uh, well, I am in. Uh, I am uh, doing my engineering uh, studies. I am actually an engineer, but I am into engineering and um, uh, also studied quantum physics and uh, many other things uh, th the thing is that I try to think uh, beyond the standard models of today but a in a reasonable way like I'm not going to jump to uh, things that are completely nonsense or completely uh, unbelievable uh, or questionable uh, for example, I'm not going to say now that uh, precisely remote viewing is done only through entanglement because there are many people that are going to jump out at me saying that no, there's nothing can be transferred through entanglement, but wait, okay, I understood that, uh, I know why, I know my matrices, whatever, I know that uh, given the, uh, given the the mainstream views of what entanglement is, uh, there is no way to transfer information like that, uh, superluminally or whatever. You always need also a classical channel, which means direct observation with the speed of light at least, uh, at least, or at max, I'm sorry. Uh, but this is not the whole story to it. Uh, they are throwing out uh, many other uh, prerequisites and many other uh, ideas that only together can explain the psychic phenomena and we are talking now about the remote viewing process now uh, <clears throat> what I think is that entanglement is a byproduct of the mind the mind is somehow more fundamental than the entanglement and it can produce entanglement. If you are uh, going to search for uh, Dean Radin's lectures, he's going to say there about 
uh, a special type of experiment in which the human mind can create, can generate entanglement actually. This is what it means. There is something called a, a spontaneous parametric down conversion. When, and let's say it uh, for the general public, when a crystal emits two photons that are entangled and it can emit two, fo two entangled photons at a certain rate which has a certain probability. Well, the human mind can concentrate and influence that probability so it can actually generate more or less entangled photons. But do you know what this means? This means that entanglement is actually produced or forced to be produced by the human mind. And now let's t uh, go uh, let's follow the real logic and real reason and throw away all the all our uh, uh, pre-assumptions. It means that mind generates entanglement, even at a distance. Okay, now, they are all saying about Bob and Alice. Bob cannot transmit messages to Alice through entanglement. Why? Because they are seeing Bob and Alice as being completely two different systems. And in this case, of course, uh, theoretically and practically, it is impossible for them to transmit information through entanglement or through some properties, special properties of space. But what psi, what they are don't, uh, they what they are not taking into account is that we are dealing here with psi, which is a not very well understood phenomenon until now. But it's it is still a physical phenomenon. It it cannot be unphysical. There is no such thing as an unphysical phenomenon that can make your hand move and draw an ideogram because your hand is physical. You need physical, you need the chemistry and the uh, chemicals and the electric fields to draw an ideogram. Okay, so we are on the way to understand it all. Yeah. There is only unknown physics maybe. Yeah. Okay, so uh, what so yeah uh, what I was talking about uh, so the Bob and Alice in our case let's say Bob is the viewer and Alice is the target Bob and Alice are both one and the same they you are talking about mirroring in your uh, in your session uh, there is a mirroring. There is a something called a action and a reaction. What you're doing is mirrored at the target, like it or not. What the target is doing is mirrored in your place because uh, actually when you're doing remote viewing, you are influenced by the target. By the target's characteristics, you get signals. You know, that, that is an influence of the target about, uh, on you. You are also influencing the target. This is physics we're talking about. You cannot avoid that. There's no way. And uh, and yes, entanglement does play a role. Entanglement and quantum uh, networks uh, you, uh, and uh, neural networks. And I'll explain to you why do we need those. Um, because we are dealing uh, with the space energy vacuum fluctuations that are anyway entangled everywhere. The, you saw, you said there about uh, many pieces linked together. Well, uh, it is known that the space itself is entangled in every point, and every point is entangled with the other point, and this is how space-time keeps itself together. It keeps its uh, structure. Now there is something called transitivity. If something is entangled with this, and this in the middle is entangled with this, they are all three entangled. So. Uh, the quantum vacuum is creating this immense net of entanglement which connects literally everything together and uh, they are forming systems uh, even across billions of uh, light years systems yeah. are are created now this is something akin to the natural radiation background you cannot escape remote viewing because our synapses are bathing into this, uh, into this uh, natural background of entanglement of the universe, and uh, this is like internet. And on the internet, when you're trying to send a message, or 
a file. It is chopped into small pieces and sent, literally broadcasted to everywhere. But only you that have the, the right IP, you are going to recognize them and gather all those pack packages and you will have to assemble them again and perform something that is called a checksum. You are going to add everything and see if it uh, if it has co errors. Okay? If it has errors, maybe you will ask it to send it again. So this is co a correction code that your brain is operating with. Your okay, and this is what you observe there. What so what we're doing is collecting many packages of information and bringing them all together in our mind and trying to fit them together, then we're going to operate some sort of, sort of transformation there to see if anything makes sense. If it makes sense, we're going to write it on the paper. If it doesn't make sense, we're going to probe again and ask again, excuse me, can you tell me again, can you send that file again because I, I something is missing here. So this is also error correcting codes. Uh, and uh, so it is not only entanglement that, let's say, <laughs> carries information. <laughs> it doesn't even care. It doesn't quite carry it. It 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 is it is a very special interblending of local processing here with our neural ne networks, and uh, a little bit of data coming from there through some sort of space magic that happens because because of this quantum entanglement. Um, and uh, yeah, <laughs> this is what this is truly actually what happens. It it, can, it can't be otherwise. It can happen otherwise. Um, we and why we can do it. And I'm going to tell you why. I have here some numbers. Uh, anyway, the brain is a quantum system because they have found some kind of special violations in the cognitive processes, the Leggett guard violations. There is an article to this. So the brain does uh, behave like a quantum system. And then uh, I want to see, okay, we have 86 billion neurons in our brain. Okay. Then from uh, these 86 billion neurons, the number of synapses are about 10 to the 14. This means in between 100 and 1000 trillion synapses. And in each synapse, there are hundreds of thousands of or millions of molecules going uh, to and fro. This is an overkill, a computational overkill. You have enough power, computational power, to reconstruct your target from even little data. And remote viewing is based what nobody wants to see it. In remote viewing, you always know already something about the target. It is a matrix. And uh, based on a very little information, extra, extra information that you're getting through remote viewing, your brain is reconstructing that matrix. It is that. So remote viewing, uh, it is a very fine balance in between calculus, reconstruction, and a little bit of uh, anomalous data. Uh, that comes through to us from uh, actually from the quantum vacuum. That is what our brain is linked to. And uh, data is not uh, carried through electromagnetism. Electromagnetism appears at both ends uh, suddenly, spontaneously, but it, it, cannot, it doesn't travel in between the target and the viewer. Uh, and this has been uh, hypothesized by bigger brains than me that said precisely that because of entanglement of space, there are photons that can appear uh, spontaneously and entangled outside of the light cone. This means they can uh, somehow reproduce themselves outside of the known classical uh, barriers. Uh, and this happens quite often and often enough to permit us to have remote viewing and psi. Uh, this is the missing link. I think we are about 90 or 95 percent away from discovering for real what happens. And I think maybe AI, uh, as it develops, is going to give us 
a bigger picture and bring us maybe to 98%, 99% of actually knowing what is going on. But it is, as you saw in your session, it is a computational task and also a sensing task. Uh, they are mixed together. This is all I have to say until now. <laughs> I'm pretty sure that we will discover more and more and more. Uh, wonderful outro from you now, uh, wonderful speak. Um, we are all travelers and explorers of remote viewing and we will go this way together. Um, thank you that you joined that. Thank you again for the tasking. Uh, it was a nice talk. We are now You're one very and a half welcome. Hour we are talking. And, um, I hope you guys outside could learn something, see something exciting for yourself, maybe your own thinking process is starting, maybe you start projects on that topic also, it would be wonderful if we can exchange ideas and move forward in this direction, everything is possible. So thank you that everybody watched and uh, you will work on here. Beyond Perception, uncovering science hidden secrets with remote view wonderful day. See you soon.